Hey everybody, Todd here, and I hope you're having a great week. I get a lot of questions about DI boxes, and spoiler alert, they're for more than just connecting up a guitar to your audio interface. I'm going to share six things you need to know about them. So at a most basic level, a DI or direct injection box is about connecting mismatched sources to microphone level balanced inputs. These are often high impedance unbalanced sources like guitars, could be outboard keyboards, but they can also be balanced sources coming from things like an audio interface or a mixer. Beyond that, a DI box can be a great way to help address issues with ground loop hum and other noise in your signal. And one of the most common applications for a DI box is to connect an instrument like a guitar up to the mic pre inputs on an audio interface or a mixer. And beyond just simply adding some nice character to the sound, some great sounding transformers, we can address other issues like long unbalanced cable runs. If you're in a studio or on a stage and the mixer or interface is a long way away, using a DI box with a short unbalanced cable to the guitar and then a longer balanced cable to the interface or mixer is gonna save you a lot of headaches with noise. So in the most basic application, we bring in a connection from our instrument. In this case, it's gonna be an unbalanced guitar. Then we're gonna go ahead out the XLR balanced output from the DI box and connect that XLR into our microphone preamps mic input. Now another application for a DI box is being able to split the source into two outputs. One could go to an unbalanced amplifier and the other a balanced microphone level signal to an interface or mixer. In the studio, this allows us to get a direct recording as well as to monitor and possibly mic up an amp cabinet to allow for flexibility in mixing. And of course on stage, we can use the amplifier for monitoring purposes while the direct signal is running back to the board at the front of the house. Now to take advantage of the through functionality, we use the same connections as before, instrument to the input on the DI, XLR out from the DI to the microphone preamp, but this time we connect up the through port using another cable, and this one will go to our guitar amplifier. And another application that doesn't get a whole lot of discussion is being able to use a microphone preamplifier as part of an effect loop or two bus processing. So with a stereo DI box, we can connect the outputs from an audio interface into the microphone inputs of a preamplifier, and then of course come back into the audio interface. This allows us to get some analog character, whether we're trying to use it on an individual track or on a mix bus. To take advantage of a two channel microphone preamp as part of an effect loop on our two bus, we need to use a two channel DI box. And so this time we'll have connections coming in from the audio interface right and left into our DI, and then we'll bring those connections out using the balanced XLRs again. We need to make sure, of course, that we keep the channels correct. We're not getting them backwards. But beyond that, the only other consideration would be the signal level. And depending what output is coming from your audio interface, you may take advantage of the pad function on the DI. Now, DI boxes fall into two main categories. We have passive and active models. And the idea is to use an active DI box when you have a passive source, like an electric guitar, possibly a Rhodes piano that doesn't have a preamp, versus a passive one where we have active sources, like an acoustic guitar with a built-in preamp output. Could also be good for synthesizers, other keyboards, as well as those line level signals from effects and audio interfaces, mixers. Now I often hear, well, my audio interface has an instrument input, so I don't really need a DI box. And if the manufacturer of your interface has thought things through and provided a high quality circuit, and all you need to do is connect up a guitar, that may be the case. But quite often the purpose built DI boxes with high quality transformers, like the Cinemags in this warm audio active unit, can be the difference between high quality sound for your direct recordings and not getting what you want. Beyond that, there are a number of features to look for when you're purchasing a DI box. The first one is the number of channels. You know, we have one channel, two channel, and multi-channel units. So whether it's a number of guitars and keyboards you need to connect, or whether you have effect loops you're trying to create, deciding on how many channels you need is an important thing. Another feature of a purpose-built DI box that you won't find on your audio interface is a ground lift switch. And that can be really beneficial when you have a keyboard or a guitar connected up to an amplifier that's plugged into a different power source than your interface or mixing board. Having that lift can eliminate ground loops and a lot of headaches. And ground lift switches are not all the same. This active unit from Warm Audio has a simple ground lift. It's a one channel unit, pretty straightforward. This radial on the other hand is a passive two channel unit 
but uses only one ground lift switch for both channels, so it's all or nothing. Whereas this ART unit, which is actually the least expensive of all of them, has an individual ground lift switch for each channel. Not necessarily going to need that, but it shows you that feature isn't necessarily related to price. And of course, a through or bypass connection allows you to record or monitor through speakers while making a direct balanced recording out to your audio interface. Having a pad function is also very helpful because of course the signal level is not the same from all sources. You know, what we get coming in from a synthesizer or other audio gear is going to be a lot stronger than what we're getting out of an electric guitar. And having that pad function allows us to ensure we don't overdrive the signal chain at any point. And looking at the pad controls on these three DIs, we see the radial two channel unit has a 15 dB pad on each channel. So we either get zero or 15 dB of attenuation. On the ART, we have a choice of zero, 20 or 40. So there's two modes for the pad, gives us a little more flexibility depending on the signal coming in. And finally on the warm audio, we have a variable pad control with anywhere from minus 30 up to plus 3 dB. So a lot of flexibility on that unit. Now there are special applications for DI boxes with advanced features. The first one that comes to mind is recording through an amplifier to capture its character, tone and flavor without using a cabinet and microphone. This is especially helpful if we have a situation where mic bleed or isolation are problems, not to mention those 3 a.m. recording sessions we all have. Now a DI box with a built-in load box allows the amplifier to see a speaker without actually having one connected up. And then the amplifier of course can work properly, won't be damaged, and we'll get a direct balanced recording out to our audio interface. Now another application for specialized DI boxes is reamp or reamplification. And essentially they allow us to work with recordings that have already been made. And so we can run a line level signal out of our audio interface into a reamp box that will then allow us to connect to a series of guitar pedals that can then come back through the reamp box into the audio interface. That way we can go ahead and use those instrument level unbalanced effects on balanced recordings that are already there. Another way to approach that is to use the same reamp box but connect into a guitar amplifier and then from that amplifier back through a load box into the audio interface to allow us to apply hardware guitar amps to recordings that have already been made. And the sixth thing you need to know about DI boxes is how much to spend. And like everything in audio, the sky is the limit. But a few considerations are just like we think about moving up from the instrument input on the audio interface to a purpose-built DI box, there can be differences between a budget level model and one that's in that intermediate price range. The transformers can be different, other things in the signal path can also be upgraded, and that can all affect your sound. So while there's no hard and fast rule for how much to spend, I like to think about five to one as a good place to start. If you have a $500 instrument, a $100 DI box is probably in the right area. If you have a $1,000 instrument, you may want to think about a $200 DI box. Again, you need to try them out. They're not all the same, but just as a rule of thumb, by no means do you have to spend thousands, but spending too little might not give you the results you're looking for. And with all the potential applications, chances are you're going to find more than one that applies for you. A DI box really is a studio staple. Now, if you want to find other ways to integrate hardware into your studio, check out one of the videos on the screen. As always, I really appreciate you joining me today. Hope you have a great rest of your week and I will see you next time.